High scratch bashing. Look at all this stuff. This, this thing's massive. Thank you for the instant dopamine. Thank you, may I? Yeah, you can have it for now. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, yes, yeah. Uh, I guess you want to look at this guy if you want. Yeah. Sort of a, a bit of a centerpiece. I got to admit, like this is the thing that draws the eye immediately. This is the centerpiece of centerpieces. This is the first thing you would see, but it was just small versions of itself. Uh, definitely, and this is a big version of a small version of a thing. How long did it take you to make this? About three months. Th I believe it. Like how many hours is that? Uh, up to one hour per day. No, I don't, it's really hard to tell. It, the, there was tons of footage um, and it took at least three months. I think I tried to release it in October for, or October uh, and it ended up coming out in January and I started before October. Maybe it was more than three months. That's also for editing the, the footage. The actual build itself though, at least three months. Was that every day? Was that like, uh, was that all you could think and eat and sleep? I did end up ingesting a certain amount of plastic uh, but yeah, I definitely thought about it and worked on it a lot. Effectively, the only job I have is building models. It was a grind. It was a grind. It was a grind. So this, I'm looking at a labor of love. It, definitely, yes. Is this a love-hate that you're looking at right now? No, this guy was pure love. Really coming together nicely. Most satisfying build award. Would you say that it grew and it kind of got bigger and bigger over time? Kind of like it was in battle, fighting, fighting a lot. Yes, you would say time. that through trial, it increased in size and strength, and through defeating mighty foes, grew even further. In wintertime, when we go to Bogning, and we're sliding down that snow hill, you don't have to wear an extra snowsuit. You already have one. You come prepared because you're a smart orc. You're taught well. You even have the right colors for the occasion. There, there. It will be tobogganing season soon. Soon you will sled down the mightiest hills. <laughs> It's almost like it's been brewing for about 10,000 years. Large, but not maximum size. I could go bigger. So you was almost committed to it, and then now it's a conditional. It could, it's not am, it's not is. You could go bigger. What would get you to the present? You're traveling in time. You're talking about the future. How do we make that the now? I just gotta see that someone else tried to make one bigger, and then I gotta go further. I immediate competition Immediate challenge. competition, yeah. Yes, because so. only through defeating mighty foes can you yourself grow. That is a fantastic mindset as an orc. That makes perfect sense. The greatest orc on all of YouTube, and therefore the world. That's a... Uh, the, the biggest and mightiest orc, <laughs> therefore the greatest, current first place <laughs> held by me. Welcome to be challenged, so that you also can be defeated. <laughs> you know what, we need scale. We gotta show, cause these things are cool by themselves and those are things that you're making too, but we're gonna have to go search for it. We're gonna, we're gonna go do it. I think my keys are on me. What is this? What channel is that you? Well, who is that? These are my glorious patrons. Oh, nice. I wear a living credits shirt. Cool. What should we do? Let's do another orc. Wait, is that a real Warlord Titan? That's a real Warlord Titan. Dude. Why is it so small? <laughs> You want to be invited to the party because your buddy came here to meet you. And we got to do a little uh, bro fist, kind of stand next to each other. How much have we been working out? This is one of those moments where <laughs> it's been a little while since he's come out of the shelf. You might need to grab the door there. But now I can't do that. Taking him away to his imminent doom. And here they are. I mean, that's pretty sweet. Wouldn't you want a battle between these two because that's a titanic battle. This is a perfect setting for this and, and that. that. <laughs> because everything is absurd. Where else does something like this exist where it perfectly fits and is appropriate to the situation? It's this right here. It's this and only this. What's his name? I just call him the big boy. He's a big orc. He's definitely a big orc. It's about Reversight, Titan sized. Do you play Apocalypse? Or is it more so just, do you want to make it that size because the idea of Apocalypse is just Apocalypse? It's gotta be that size because bigger is better. Especially for orcs, but I mean in general, but especially for orcs. I like that logic. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, why? Why? Well, I'd been building models for a while and I thought I could impress people with a very big Orktober build. Uh, I'm a little bit of a procrastinator. Sometime mid-September, I decided to hard commit, build this guy. I got through probably the planning stages by the end of October and it was finished sometime in the next year. So you build it for other people? Yeah, I mean, well, like, that's what you, that's, um, you want to show people cool stuff. Was it like a surprise that you were wanting to like reveal to them? Were you anticipating a reaction? What was that? It was definitely a surprise to unveil it to everyone. 
uh, obviously the patrons. The patrons would have known beforehand because I post them on all the uh, behind the scenes. But yeah, just unveiling, just kind of coming out of the blue, unveiling this huge orc. The, the gun, like, <laughs> you see when I see this gun, it's like, more DACA. That's, I think more DACA when I see the gun. You got the turbo lasers and you actually have the same up here. You see how, how nicely that matches. But these are knockoff Lego and these are Forge World. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, there's like a lot of space in the gun housing. I figured you could just tuck in more and more and more barrels. Kind of, you know what? It reminds me of like the Hulkbuster a little bit. Yeah, it's probably the combination of green and red. This guy needs to be red so that he can, I guess, run fast. It's also the easiest color to paint. The contrast between red and metallic is the most rewarding. I have a really simple painting style, so I go with what works and what's gonna be most effective, especially coming through on camera, because uh, except for you, not a lot of people get to see this in real life. That is something that I'm observing and it's uh, making me feel things that are positive. Uh, we call that a positive wog energy. Positive wog energy, yes, yeah. that makes sense. Uh, the head, how'd you do the head? That is custom modeled with green stuff, like an old school miniature modeler. I did, I figured out what I was doing along the way. It's so big that you can kind of make mistakes and then peel it back and start over again. This is incredible. It's the only one that exists like this. You made a unique model. You sculpted this. Uh, it came out of this flesh suit into this mechanical plastic suit. And it's just, <laughs> just like, this is you. This is all a part of it. This looks like something you would buy. Like it looks like a thing that GW makes. I think I would buy it. I, I would hope so. Wink, uh, wink, if I could. Yeah, uh, the head actually, he, he, it comes out if you want to take a look at his. Oh, yes, I do, yes, yes. Just lift his tooth. So you can see he's got the cyborg components. I gave him the uh, Empire Strikes Back Cloud City headphone guy earpiece, so I wouldn't have to model ears. And then this one, we just, we don't look at that side. When it's in, his head's turned. He has, once I was done with the face, I really couldn't contemplate doing, you know, any more sculpting. This is a lot of time and feeling and energy. It sure was. What does this mean to you? Like this, it's a, it's a statue, which is symbolic of what? It's a statue in a way, yeah. It's a milestone, it's uh, to date. This is the greatest orc model uh, that exists, that's a challenge as well. I made the hands too on this guy, so yeah, really pushing the green stuff. They did say that the prime orcs or the beast head tusks like tree trunks, so these actually might be a little small. I probably could have gone bigger. I wanted to build the coolest orc I possibly could. There's lots of big vehicles and stuff, but part of the lore, which I might be getting only partially accurate about growing through struggle and combat, um, defeating mighty foes, and how that has a theoretical no upper limit, I thought, okay, well, that means I could make a Titan-sized orc, and so I did. In the future, I'll make a bigger orc, I promise. Human-sized, but 32 millimeter scale, so it still will be appropriate for the tabletop. Nice. Because what if this guy keeps growing for another 10,000 years? You never know. I mean, that's a great question, yes. And I've thought, oh, I thought, oh yeah, well maybe his, some of his weapons could be, it's like his, his foot is an entire dreadnought, or his axe is an entire rhino. Yes, what? That's awesome, that is that. It right helps there. with the scale. I could have gone Land Raider. You can see I'm very conservative. It could have been a Land Raider as the axe, but baby steps. We go with the Rhino first. <laughs> That's right. We got to be sensible. Chain Rhino Chompa. That was a good literation. Well, yes. this, the C on Rhino is silent. Just to show a little comparison there, that's a Rhino. That's the size of a Rhino. And this is, take a look at that. Okay, so he sees that for breakfast, wants to change out his blade on his axe and just picks up the Rhino and replaces it. So very efficient. Very efficient. This is a gift for you, which you have to give back to me at the end. Let's see about one of these. <gasps> oh, yes! So this vehicle comes here like this. This feels more like a hard plastic. I don't want to rub it in, but <laughs> so, thanks for sending me that, by the way. I really enjoyed painting it. I, I see your uh, version of paint, one that uh, bashes the ways, and that looks excellent. Thank you very much. Oh, anytime. Anytime you send me a model, I will. Loot it. It feels so chonky. It really is chonky. It's not dainty. Not in the not in the slightest. No. You, you would need to be King Kong to rip this off, or the Hulk. That's right. Or a prime work. No, thank you for this. Yeah. How much do you want for it? Oh, excellent. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. For the just for the context of this video. Uh, I'm going to take a look at the other green stuff bits. Like this is you got the hand here and the arm. And then you got the muscles here. Muscly arm. Yeah. Built up with uh, tinfoil armature, so I'd save on green stuff. That's also a cheapness technique. And I think maybe it's an official sculpting technique, but I'm not totally sure. The hand, I use my own hand for a, a model. That's why it looks so uh, strong and masculine. There it is, yes. But very uh, scarred and manly. There's lots of engine grease under my fingernails, and it's been through a lot. Very evident, yeah, I see the battle wounds. Battles, industrial uh, work in a warehouse. 
Let's go back to the beginning. Where did it start with you and your YouTube channel and the scratching of the bashing of everything that you see walking around on this material plane? Before YouTube, my own childhood. There we go, look at this photograph. This is a model of a cannon on a ship in Fort York in Toronto. It's probably like a one to 12 scale. And as a child, I stood before this and I wept like a child for I feared one day I would never be able to make something so small and so cool. Uh, and I was a kid, so that was true. There was no way I was gonna do this, so we, we throw this away. But I was definitely thinking that things that were small were cool. I definitely tried to make one. I think probably my dad did most of the work, uh, but I was there while it was happening. And uh, you know, I got into making car models a little bit, but I wasn't that good at following the instructions. And then one day, my cooler, older friend, when I was about 12, uh, I was over at his house hanging out. He liked cool stuff like, you know, this little independent film called Star Wars. Uh, there were three of them. They were quite good, or people told me. I think I'd seen some of them. He had like cool Star Wars models and he had video games and awesome stuff. And he showed me and then gave me this a little second edition Space Marine. Painted up with the slightly lore inaccurate Legion of the Damned plus Blood Angels plus Death Company. But I thought, look at this crazy suit of armor, this giant gun, this is so cool. And he also showed me a weird piece of cardboard uh, that was all shredded up and painted kind of gray to look like concrete. And he explained to me that this model was part of a game and you play it on something called scenery. And that you can make out of anything. I think I can do that. And before collecting any <laughs> Warhammer, I made a, a ton of very, very, very low quality terrain. Uh, but eventually I got into collecting the Warhammer and then at some point I saw conversions using different pieces to make different things. That's really cool. Heard about green stuff. The pieces that you want to use don't fit. You put the green stuff in there. That's cool. But then it kind of faded away a little bit and I, I forgot about those old cool days. I even played some Warhammer, which meant that there was less converting and more looking at the rules and just trying to win, which I did sometimes, that's kind of cool. And then at some point, not that long ago, I got laid off from my job and I decided to commit my spare time to using up all the garbage I've been collecting with hopes of making terrain. So I guess I hadn't really forgot about it. Uh, anyway, get this guy out of here. I made my own custom tank, which I didn't bring today, but then I made my own custom robot, which I thought would be cool as like a highly detailed piece of terrain. What if there was a wreck of a robot? And I ended up making this guy. It's like Victorian steampunk. It's got kind of a steampunk, it has a laser for some reason. I thought perhaps this would be like maybe an imperial mining world that their militia, weaponized some industrial mech, uh, maybe kind of like a Gene Steelers cult thing, or maybe just like planetary defense. And around this time I was watching YouTube, as one does. I was watching a, a little little Canadian channel called Black Magic Craft, and I thought, Jeremy, Jeremy, this guy seems pretty cool. Making videos about models, that seems pretty cool. And I said, wait, I just made a model. So I shot a terrible slideshow. Uh, I had a few pictures for work in progress. Uh, that I'd taken while I was making it and I posted it to YouTube on my channel with the extremely creative name, Scratch Bashing. It's Scratch Building, it's Kit Bashing. Didn't really see anyone saying this, so boom, I took it. Very low to moderate success. But I kept chipping away at it and then sometime during the pandemic, I made this guy. A crashed vehicle sunken into the sand. It uses all the same techniques I used on the robot, same painting style. It's made out of just one thing. Good. Watch out, Dave! He's got a gun! Relax. This is Canada. It's just a water gun. This vehicle is this water gun. Well, not this one, it's brother. And that's pretty cool. And then sometime after that, our friend Jeremy at Black Magic Craft coincidentally made a water gun terrain video. And our friend Guy at Midwinter Minis made a water gun terrain video. And I thought, oh, that's kind of cool. They're doing a similar thing. I like it. And then I saw that on both of their videos in the sidebar, my video was recommended. That's cool. And then the channel just spiked. And I went from, I don't know, 300 subscribers to 10,000. So, cool. got inspired to keep going and really got hooked on making stuff for orcs. Made this dinky little grot tank. <laughs> A lot of fun, really cute, look at this little guy. Eventually collaborated with my infamous squad of collaborators 
to make a series of pod racers in our own design. I, of course, went with the Orc, combining, again, that indie film, uh, Star Wars, uh, combining a little bit of the lore from episode one with Orcs. I think the sort of chaotic nature uh, and the ramshackle construction of pod racers fits Orc lore perfectly. You gotta respect the lore, of course. Big shout out to my squad, the man who is a boy and a fish, Boy Lai Hobby Times one of the most famous Star Wars hobbyists. Studson Studio, who's a very kind raccoon, also loves to collect garbage and build awesome things. Uh, Bill makes stuff. He's, uh, I think he's Australian. He lives in the UK. Um, he really loves to do kit bashing and trash bashing as well. Famous Canadian who for a little while thought he was American, Eric's Hobby Workshop. And uh, now they're my squad after that collab. We always hang out, talk about modeling, YouTube, that sort of stuff. That's awesome. I love that. There's so many different parts of the wargaming community. And the kit bashing, scratch bashing, conversion work, all that type of adjacent stuff is really, really cool. There's a human need for validation that we all have. We need that. We so, need that Instagram you know what? validation. Why not? Yes. This is one of four pictures on my Instagram account. Don't you want to follow that account? This is, you know what? There's going to be a, a collaborated post, mini wargaming and scratch bash. Now so there'll be five posts. Five posts. Okay, so there's that as well, which you can click on that. That's a that's a thing, and that'll bring it to the scratch bashing Instagram page. And also there's the YouTube. All the links are always provided in pinned comments and descriptions. So if you want to see more of the insanity that is this being of existence here with <laughs> us, and there is more, what else do you guys want to see? If you've seen the other things on this channel, it's insane, totally in the membrane. I'll shout you out because I'll say things that you wouldn't say about yourself. So it's Patreon. The YouTube channel, YouTube, Patreon. Anywhere else? Instagram, I need that validation. I need the follows. <laughs> <laughs> And the legs, the legs look so chunky. Like they're really strong and they can support a lot of weight. They're not dainty, you know, like they're mechanized and they're beefy. Zero daint. I think I sort of imagined that organic legs would fit inside of that. Uh -huh. They might. The scale's okay. I probably could have made them a little bit bigger, but um, yeah, basically I made like a shell, an armored shell. Tried to make it as big as possible. This is a carbon monoxide detector, so that gives you an idea of the the, the width and scale of it. Oh, yeah. And because this is a piece of Mega Bloks, this is six studs wide for those Lego fans out there. Cool. Yeah, I'm kind of, I'm just so mesmerized looking at all the detail here, right? Like when you say three months, I'm like, yep, I believe it. Because I've been a part of hobby projects in a much smaller sense, and those are like long, and even conversion projects, right? Like even an eight hour session of converting stuff up, you can get a lot done three months of just pure, raw, chaotic energy infused <laughs> into one thing, yes, I can totally see that that would be that long. That's really cool. That is so cool. What are some of the responses that you've seen from this? Because it's the only one of the, I, I haven't seen this. I'm still confident that this is the biggest and therefore greatest orc on the internet. Uh, that's a big, cl okay, now that's that's a declaration now. That's, uh, people are gonna come out of the, they're gonna start uh, challenging that. You just issued a wah. I did issue a, a, a sincere wah upon the world. <laughs> uh, awesome. Anybody who wants to can uh, come and watch the full video at 0.5 times speed uh, for additional retention points. <laughs> and uh, then they can see if they can match up with their own uh, much larger, if possible, which I kind of doubt, uh -huh. much larger orc. So the response has been appropriately large. Yeah. It's my most popular video. Oh, of course, that makes sense. M most comments. Uh, yeah. People are mentioning that they think it is big, yeah. um, and they're not wrong. People do the craziest things when it's driven by, I don't know, I like to call it chaos. People like to call it passion and like uh, inspiration and like energy and like creative flow. And yeah, I just think it's all chaos. This is this chaos manifests this. This is chaos. And it's chaos incarnate right in front of us. Lightly organized chaos, Lightly but organized. barely because it's still fitting with the orc lore. That's right. Which is still pretty pretty rustic, so. Yes. Yeah, that's the thing about orcs is they're 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 very much a free flow. If you slap it together, if it works that way, then it's gonna work that way because we believe it works that way. Some people disagree that that is canon, but it doesn't matter because if you are an orc and you believe that that fake lore is canon, then it becomes canon because you believed it was true. <laughs> yes, <it's, laughs> 
<laughs> okay. So take that, commenters. <laughs> Okay. Unless they're orcs themselves and they believe that it's not true, then there's kind of like a dueling of the wills. Yes. It's Gork or Mork. It's one or the other. It's oh, the, whoever decides. Gosh, I hope no one does that. I, I really like the lore that, that anything can work, so let's try to keep it that way. Everyone keep on believing that that is the case. Check out Scratch Bashing. There's a link down below and a link right here on the screen. You can just uh, click on it to see some more of Mike's tutorials and Scratch Bashing videos. He's also got a Patreon, so if you would like to support this insanity, there's an option for that. Uh, Mike has made it easy for people to perpetuate his addiction of, uh, yeah, the, yeah, here we go. Yeah, there's a bunch of- Living things. Patreon credits right in the video. I bring my own Patreon credits from home. That's actually awesome, man. That's, that's, it's all about the community and support and all that. I love that. That's, that's cool. It's all about the patrons. That's cool. Uh, thank you, patrons, and thank you guys for watching. Um, Thumbs up if you like this, and if you want more, let us know what more you would like to see. In fact, if there's other scratch bashing videos and other things that he has bashed together, what would you like us to ask him questions about? Maybe we'll make those videos because we are here today and time's an illusion, therefore we can see forward in the warp, know what your answers are gonna be, and just post the videos later. I think that's really, that, that's how that works, right? That is true. Yeah. That's what we'll do.